The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to worship with our Savior's Lutheran Church of Faribault. It's good that we can gather tonight on this Wednesday, the 27th of May, for a service of prayer and praise and thanksgiving. Of course, we would love to be together in person. Right now, we are limiting that contact based on the best advice we can receive and also out of love for our neighbor. And we will continue to do that for some time. In fact, just as an aside, we have a group of folks who will be gathering just even this evening now to talk about, about what our next steps might be in managing our response to this, uh, this pandemic outbreak. So as we make some determinations, we'll let you know as quickly as we can what we're thinking about. But in the meantime, uh, we hope and pray that you're safe where you are and, uh, and know that you're in our prayers. Remember, if you've got concerns or cares, things that are on your mind or in your heart, don't hesitate to reach out to the church office. You can do that at any time during business hours, and we'll respond to you as quickly as we can. Uh, and please know, again, that you are in our prayers. Kira, anything you'd like to say to this crew as we begin our time of worship together tonight? I'm just grateful, again, for this time um, to spend in conversation with you, you Jeff, on this amazing topic that so many people have so many questions about, right? And yeah, yeah. So I'm excited for our conversation tonight. And I'm missing all of our friends from church. Um, mm -hmm. It's just not the same. Um, but I am grateful for the task force that has been put together to help us figure out where we are going and when we are called to be back together inside the church, but um, for the community of faith that is our saviors that lives and breathes the Holy Spirit in um, their homes and in this community, I'm grateful for you. And of course, that exciting topic that Kira is talking about is Pentecost. This next Sunday is the Sunday of the Pentecost. You'll hear more about that in our message. I just want to echo what Kira was saying too. Uh, I had a, a great conversation with a very dedicated and faithful member of our church yesterday. And she, she really misses being at, at church, not just being at church, but being with people. She's a person who lives alone and, and she finds a great deal of support and, and friendship in the members of our congregation. And so uh, we know that there are many who are facing difficult challenges. And, and so I, I speak to that person. I know you're watching. I'm not going to say your name. Just know that you do remain in my prayers. And, uh, and her question was, well, when can we get back together and give each other a hug? And, and I said, man, I don't know. I don't know. But in the meantime, just hold on to the promise that God is with us and that the spirit brings us together. Definitely. Um, yeah. So, so again, it's, it's great that you're here. We're going to begin our time uh, just with one, one more quick word of sharing. Um, perhaps you've seen the troubling story uh, from Minneapolis. Um, it's hard to believe that that happened in a neighborhood that I'm very familiar with. In fact, our daughter Naomi lived just a few blocks away from this site. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you've not been paying attention. Uh, but if you haven't heard, I'll share it with you. Uh, just yesterday, a, a man named George Floyd, a man from that community, uh, died uh, in an altercation with Minneapolis police. Um, there are still many questions that are unanswered, but but one of them is one of them is how can how can something like that happen? How is that possible? And I know that it's bringing a great deal of grief and, uh, and sadness and frustration. There are lots of things that we all need to think about. And, and one of them is, is a topic that can cause people to get a little bit edgy. But these days, there's a phrase that's used to talk about what it means to be white in America. And, and the phrase is white privilege. That is to say, because I am a white middle-class male there are challenges that I will never and have never faced because of my color and my socioeconomic status. On the other hand, people of color, people who don't enjoy the privileges that I have had my entire life, face experiences and realities that would never, never be a part of my life. And I know, Kira, you've, you've actually done a lot of reading about this. In fact, honestly, Kira actually finished writing a paper about, about this topic for seminary last night, Kira. Mm -hmm. Is there something you'd like to share about, about those observations even now? You know, so I just finished a course called um, Justice and Reconciliation, and I 
this whole semester has been a learning process for me. Um, we've we, actually the Minneapolis police chief came and spoke to us about the way he lives out um, building trust and building community. And so um, I was grateful to hear him speak a couple months ago and then to see his reaction um, to what happened the two days ago. But more importantly, I think that something that as a white woman, um, middle-class woman, I also have white privileges um, and I don't, I do not have the lived trauma and the generational trauma mm. that people of minorities or immigrants have. And so just know that I see you, I hear you, and what happened was not right. Um, I believe wholeheartedly that God loves each and every person on this earth. And it's my job to do the same as well. I'm not here to judge people, um, but I will stand up for the injustices of this world. And, and I think it's, it's true that we should consider this reality that in the face of the challenges that we have right now with, with this brutal act, uh, with COVID-19, um, this phrase is, is truer than ever before. All it takes for evil to prevail in this world is for good people to do nothing. Right. We need to speak out. I, I read one quote this morning, Kira, that, that uh, still kind of haunts me. It was written by a person uh, of privilege. And, um, and this person wrote, I pray that if this were happening to me, that you would do something. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the prayer of everyone who's being marginalized or, or, or in some way uh, treated in, in a way that harms them. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't pretend to know what's going on in all of this, no. and certainly not in, in communities of color. But I do know that, that as a Christian person, especially, especially as we anticipate Pentecost, where people stood up and talked about what really mattered. Right and challenge the forces of the day, that that's something that we as Christians need to do and we need to do it better. Right. So let's, uh, let's begin our time in, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and let's pray. Gracious God, you've told us that we can come to you in prayer at any time. And for that, we're very grateful. Uh, right now, the circumstances that each of us face are things that we could never completely be prepared for. Some of us are very isolated and alone, and, um, and we long to be back together with our, our members of, of the church. We just want to have someone give us a hug. And there are others of us who are feeling stir-crazy. We're stuck in our homes, and we, we feel like we just got to get back out there and do something. And there are others who are, who are feeling the economic pinch, and then there are people who are trying to hold their businesses together, and there are folks who are worried about loved ones that they can't see. And because of all those things we come to in our prayers. And now, Lord, too, we pray for, we pray for uh, what appears to be the anger uh, that's bubbling up in our society. Um, and we don't know exactly what to pray for or how to pray, but we've turned this over to you. And we ask that you might use us to be instruments of your peace and healing in this world. Because where it's broken and busted and ill, uh, you send us. Help us never to be afraid to, to be a part of the body of Christ that is willing to say and do what's right. So I pray now that you would bless our time together in worship, that you might, um, that you might touch us with the power of Pentecost and, uh, and open our ears and our hearts and our mouths so that we might live out our faith. It's in Jesus' name that we pray these things. Amen. Amen. So as we've talked about, this next Sunday is the Sunday of Pentecost. Uh, my bet is that most of you know a bit about that story. And right now we're going to have Micah read it for us from the Spark Bible. Uh, if you don't know what the Spark Bible is, it's a Bible that we that we use with our children's ministries at church. And it's it's a great book. There it is. Kira's got it right there. And what it is, it, it's a paraphrase of all of the key stories of the Bible. And, and this story now of the Pentecost is summed up in a beautiful way. And I want to say thanks to Micah for reading it, reading it for us. So thanks, Micah. 
Jesus' disciples were celebrating a festival called Pentecost, when suddenly a strong wind blew through the house. Everyone's hair was lifted up, and they were on amazing noise. They looked at each other. It looked like each disciple had a flame of fire touching him, but no one was burned. The Holy Spirit had come, just like Jesus promised. The disciples began to speak in different languages, languages they've never learned. Stronger yet, they could understand each other. Peter stood up. I want to tell you about Jesus. He reminded everyone what Jesus taught them. He told us how Jesus died and lives again. It's time for us to begin a new life with God's spirit guiding us, Peter said. The disciples were excited to live differently, guided by God's spirit. This was the beginning of the Christian church. Thanks again, Micah. And if you'd like to look up that story, all you got to do is find your Bible. And I hope you can find that someplace handy. I had a friend who once said the only thing that God doesn't like is a dusty Bible. So dust it off and take a look. Turn to the book of Acts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. And tonight we're going to explore chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. That's what Micah just read about in that paraphrase. And we're going to be studying and thinking about that story of the first Pentecost so long ago. Uh, let's pray and we'll jump in. Lord God, the power of your story has uh, the ability to transform our lives. And we pray that that would happen today. Um, thank you for my friend Kira, for her wisdom, for her insight. Thank you for the gift of your scripture that guides us and direct us, directs us. And thank you for all of those who are, who are leaning in today to, to hear more about, about your holy word. We pray that you would bless them and bless us too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So again, it's the second chapter of Acts. It is this marvelous story of the Pentecost. You may remember that last week we talked about the ascension of Jesus. It's the beginning of this book of Acts where Jesus leaves this world and enters the next to be with his father, to sit at his right hand. And he tells his friends, don't be afraid. I'm still going to be with you, but not in the way that you expect. I'm going to be with you through the power of the Holy Spirit. And on the day of Pentecost, that's what happens. In fact, some would say that, that Pentecost is the birthday of the church. It is the day where the Holy Spirit breathed life into this, into this new infant of a church. And we started to figure out what it meant to be church for the very first time. And so uh, as we approach this text, we're going to ask those three questions that we've asked uh, during our Wednesdays for the last little bit of time. Uh, what does the text say? What does the text mean? And what if we take it seriously and apply it to our lives? And so, um, as you may or may not know, we don't do a lot of rehearsing about this. The intent is for us to, to really dig into the scripture uh, while you are too. So I hope you've got your Bibles open. Uh, Acts chapter 2, and we're going to ask those three questions. What does it say? What does it mean? And what if we take it seriously and apply it to our lives? So, uh, Kira, uh, on the surface, even maybe digging a little bit deep, what does it mean? What does this text, rather, what does the text say? Sorry about that. So if I'm going to stick within the text of um, the Spark Storybook Bible, I think that this book says, holy cow, this is crazy. This is an, a crazy <laughs> event, right? Like it used words like everyone's hair lifted up and there was an amazing noise. Yep. A flame of fire touching him, but no one was burned. I mean, yeah, yeah. I don't get that concept here today and now. And so like, what does it say? To me, it says something amazing and totally new was happening. Yep, yep. And it's important to think about it. So it, it, it says it's the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who are math lovers out there, this is not here. This is 50 <laughs> days after Easter, right? right? So 50 days after Easter, there is this celebration that we, that we have now. And uh, actually, it comes from the Jewish tradition. First, it was 50 days after the Passover. But now we use this day to mark uh, on our calendars that 50 days of that time where Jesus was with his disciples and then left them and then said, now, folks, this is yours. The church is yours. You need to do it. And it also says that, that this happened because of the Holy Spirit. Right. And again, as we've talked many times, as, as Lutheran Christian persons, we're, we're very comfortable talking about uh, 
God the Father, immortal, invisible, God only wise, and, and, and Jesus, who is our beautiful Savior. But we don't talk about the Holy Spirit as much. Right. Another, another thing it says is that, is that these disciples were able to speak in languages that other people could understand. Right. It doesn't say that they spoke in tongues, which is what some people have experienced in the church. It says they actually could speak in languages that other people could understand from different places. And that's remarkable. And one last thing it says, Kira, and then we should jump into what does it mean. It also says that Peter, mm -hmm. a guy who denied Jesus, right? Yeah. Yep. Who sometimes was um, a man who could put his foot in his mouth, mm -hmm. was never afraid to tell people what he thought unless they were asking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now gets up in front of all these people and says, I guess it's my turn to preach. And he does. And he says, he says something remarkable. He does. He says, everybody is in. Yep. Nobody's out. Everybody's saved. Guiding uh, anything, us. What's that? Guiding us. Guiding us. That the spirit guides us and that, that we're saved. So, so it has all that stuff in these 21 verses. Um, so, so what does it mean? Let's, let's move on to that. Um, let's, let's think about that a little bit. What, what, did you, what did you come up with, Kira? What do you think it means? So I switched over to the NRSV translation yeah, for yeah, this too, one to just dig a little deeper. And what I read um, was more so about when Peter was addressing the crowd. Mm -hmm. And Peter says, sons and daughters shall prophesy. Um, Young men shall see visions, old men shall dream dreams, slaves, both men and women. Um, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. To me, what it means is everybody is included in this. There is not an exclusion at all. Um, and women are specifically acknowledged in this with in the Bible. They aren't always acknowledged. And so... Um, to me, it means every single person is included in this call to be led and guided by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when you say everybody, you mean everybody? Everybody. I actually really like the language in the Spark Storybook Bible that says um, languages they'd never learned, stranger yet, they could understand each other. Um, I just think that speaks to the inclusion of this. So let, let me push you a little bit back to what we did as a kind of preamble to the service today about, about white privilege and about the idea that somehow some might be better than others. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and again, um, we, we need to be honest about that and careful about that so we don't judge or put anybody in a box. But um, what does it mean today in our world um, if you think about this idea that that Peter is preaching that everybody is included. Everybody is, 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 everybody's in, right? Mm -hmm. And what does that say about, about our, um, sometimes our, what propensity, I guess, is the word to exclude? Um, well, I think of a lot of things come to mind when we start talking about who's in, who's not in. I yeah. think of in America, we live in a hierarchical society. Um, in an individualistic society where we are each working for ourselves and to better ourselves and, and be the best, right? That's, that's what we're kind of taught throughout life. And I'm, I, I'm number one. Yeah, I'm yep. number one. And um, people step on each other to get to be number one. And um, if they see somebody that has something, they want it. Um, and so I am reminded of the fact that I love the ELCA church. The ELCA church has worked hard, still has some ways to go in inclusion, um, but it is that I am called to love my brothers and sisters, period. There's mm -hmm. not a but or an exception in that. Mm -hmm. um, that I am called to act with justice. <laughs> I'm, I could just pull out my paper that I was just um, writing because I actually well, wrote about the a fact. Bad thing, yeah. I wrote about the fact that this song calls us to be exactly who we are supposed to be in this church: is to love all people, to act justly, to 
to um, include. It's Mike, Micah, Micah 6 8, right? Do justice, love mercy, walk humbly right. with your God. It is. Yeah. And yeah. So, um, so I think that as a church, that is what we are called to do. We are called to love all, no matter what, period. Yeah. There is there is no but, which is hard. The one thing, well, yeah, I mean, it's so vital that we talk about that in a way that allows us to let our guard down a little bit. Mm -hmm. I must admit, when I first was challenged about, about white privilege or male privilege um, by my daughter, uh, who is a person right now who is in graduate school at the Humphrey School and also getting a master's of social work at the same time, when she talked about that to me, I, I, I initially got a little bit defensive and I said, wait, wait a minute, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not racist, I'm not classist, I'm not sexist. Mm -hmm. But she talked about some of the realities about my life and I, I had to swallow hard and I had to say, you know what, I, I do look at people different from me in ways that are not always in the best light. Mm -hmm. And I have expectations that I feel should be met because somehow I think I must be of a special class, mm -hmm. right? I mean, even, this is crazy. Even when I pull into the parking lot at a hospital, there's a spot reserved for me, clergy, right up front. It's kind of crazy, right? But somehow or another, I've got these privileges that, that others don't have, and I, I need to think about that. Um, I think too, Jeff, if you ever want to know what your privilege is in life, yeah, yeah. Go drive into a different part of town that you're not used to. Walk yep. on a street that you're not used to. Yep. And that moment that you clench your purse as you're walking by somebody, or that moment that you won't park in a certain spot because of um, somebody that's the vehicle that's parked next to you, yeah. um, that will start to show your privilege. I want to acknowledge the fact that, like, we want to be safe as a society too, right? There is that level of understanding as well. But your privilege shows when you react to something and you're like, wait, where did that come from? That will help you understand your privilege. And the scary thing about that is that when that happens, it's kind of hardwired into us. Mm -hmm. What we do is we do exactly the opposite of what this text is, is, is saying. What this means is that God actually has the power to do new things with ordinary people right. who have our regular old biases and he did it with them and he's doing it with us. And the crazy thing now, especially with insiders and outsiders, what Peter is, is this, this devout confirmed Jew. And all of a sudden he's standing up in Jerusalem and saying that this gift of God that had been kept for the chosen ones mm -hmm. is now for everybody. Mm -hmm. That's what this right. means. And, and I tell you what, right. That, that, that's for us too. I mean, for us too, we need to think about that in our lives. So we've already started to dig into it a little bit, but I, I think we should dig a little deeper. So what this, what this text says is that it's Pentecost, something amazing and crazy happened. Can't quite explain it, but I kind of wish I could have seen it. Right. Other languages, Peter preached. It means that everybody's in, nobody's out. It means that God has power. But then what if, what if we take it seriously? I mean, we as individuals, we as a community called Our Savior's Lutheran Church, we as God's people, what if we take this seriously and then apply it to our lives? Like, like right now, it's Wednesday, it's the 27th of May. Um, what do you think, Kira? What, what does it mean, or what, is it, what if we take it seriously? Well, so if I'm, I focus more on what the Holy Spirit is doing in yeah. us and through these people, and um, through Peter preaching to them. I believe that the Holy Spirit is something that is inside each one of us. Mm -hmm. It calls us, it gathers us as a community, and then it sends us out to go and do work. I really like the language, and the language that stood out to me as Micah read was guided. Mm -hmm. I believe that we are all guided. We are called, we are gathered, and then we are sent to be guided by this thing called the Holy Spirit. And if I were to take this calling seriously, I would learn that when there is somebody that is different than me, that I different than me, I would be reminded that I am called to love them and I am called to um, have compassion and empathy and respect for the different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
the interesting thing for me as I think about this, what does it mean if we take it seriously? It means that God has the power to do things mm -hmm. through the church. Right. And if we take it seriously and believe then that we are the church, mm -hmm. that then God has the power to do that thing through us too. Through us, yeah. Th these, these folks were not gathered in a building, right? Yeah. They were not confined by that space. They were in the world wherever they were. Mm -hmm. And wherever we are right now, wherever we are, uh, even with the limitations that we have, and of course the, or the first disciples had limitations too, wherever we are, we have the capacity the ability, and, and I believe what we need to pray for is the will mm -hmm. to imitate those first disciples on that Pentecost. Right. And as we do, we need to have the courage to realize that we're not alone, right? Mm -hmm. We don't do this alone. The yeah. Spirit is with us every step of the way. And how do I feel that Spirit? Well, I feel that Spirit through the encouragement of my colleagues. Mm -hmm. And I feel that Spirit through the phone conversation I had with that friend from church who said, man, I really miss getting together and, and I can't wait till we can have that sense of what it means to be church. Mm -hmm. I get that encouragement, that, that sense of the Holy Spirit kind of pushing or prodding me in all sorts of different ways. When I watch the news, when I read the paper, when I get online and I, I read stories about what's happening in Minneapolis and, and in other parts of our world, mm -hmm. it, it helps kind of confront me and compel me to say, well, if I actually believe this stuff, then it should actually have an effect on me, mm -hmm. right? Right. So, um, and, and I think if we take it seriously, we have to realize that right now, right this moment, is one of those times where the church, the message of the church, the people of the church is desperately needed, right? right. Because mm -hmm. there is so much division that's going on right now. Right. Um, so so how, how else... How else would you kind of put a bow on this for people as we try to wrap this up, Kira? What, what else would you like to say? I really like um, the imagery that you set forth about how God goes with us in it, right? Like yep, that, yep. that we don't go it alone. Um, I think the Holy Spirit is a hard thing to understand, especially um, as a tangible thing. Um, but when we know we aren't alone and we are guided, it's who we're called to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. And for me, um, as we alluded to last week, that actually gives me a great deal of hope mm -hmm. and, and a great deal of excitement about the future. Right. Because I, I think right now people are paying attention to what matters mm -hmm. and then also starting to figure out what matters most. And I think at moments like this, we start to realize that faith, family, friends, the gifts of love and grace and mercy, those things are the core of who we are. Right. And when we keep those at our center, and that, mm -hmm. that is that, that, that burning center of our soul, that, that we, can't, we, we don't get as distracted as we once did. We start to realize that there are things that we need to do. And because of the power of the Spirit on Pentecost, which is with us now, we actually can do them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just, have to, we just have to do it. Mm -hmm. We just have to do it. Um, any more parting things you'd like to share, Kira? Anything else? No, I don't think so. Great, great. Well, I want to say thanks, Kira, for this ongoing conversation, and, and thanks to all of you for listening in. Um, if I could wave a magic wand, I'd, I'd uh, somehow wave it and say, uh, all of the people who are hearing our voices now would sit down with their Bibles and open up the book of Acts and start reading and, and get yourself into this second chapter of Acts and get ready because as we move through the summer, this book of Acts is going to be our template, our guide, our direction to help us think about what it means to be church in this new and exciting way. Um, so blessings, Kira, you want to pray for us as we wrap up? Yes. Okay. Let's pray um, for the church and the whole world and all those in need. So good and gracious God, as we look forward to the day of Pentecost, fill us each with the gift of your Holy Spirit. Look upon us as we gather in prayer and open our hearts to receive your word today. May our hearts come to rest and heal the divisions of our world and of our words. Remind us that 
with one voice and with one song that we praise your holy name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we call on your spirit of unity, giving thanks um, for our differences, differences in race and ethnicity and vocation. Activate us to be the good in the world, that where we see diversity, we use our gifts to bring people together in love and in you. Help us that we might reveal your spirit of love for all people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we call upon your spirit of life. Heal us with your breath. Heal all of creation, especially those who struggle with health concerns. As the death toll continues to rise from the coronavirus, we ask for your presence here. Sustain the doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers for long shifts and isolating jobs. Bring your spirit upon them so they can find stamina for the work ahead. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Hear our prayer. Loving God, our heart aches for the senseless death of George Floyd. Surround his family with love and support in the loss of their brother. We ask you to be with all people for whom this violent act has reminded them of the trauma in their own life. Lord, we cannot live divided where humanity is oppressed and marginalized. Surround the community where there are divides, unite us. Where we are prideful, humble us. Give each person a heart for justice and empathy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Good and gracious God, all these things we lift up to you in prayer, knowing that you hear the words spoken and those left in the silence of our hearts. Guide us as we move through these days and weeks. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. I invite you all to join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now receive this benediction as you are sent by the Holy Spirit to go out into the world. May the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Amen.